Day two of the Supreme Court showdown over President Obama's health care law and today a heated battle over the individual mandate. Can the government force you to buy health insurance? And if yes, is there anything the government cannot make you buy? Why do you define the market that broadly? Health care. It may well be that everybody needs health care sooner or later, but not everybody needs a heart transplant. Not everybody needs a liver transplant. Why, why, That's correct, why, I mean, Scalia, but you never know whether could, you're going could to Could you define person. the market? Everybody has to buy food sooner or later, so you define the market as food. Therefore, everybody's in the market. Therefore, you can make people buy broccoli. No, that's it's quite different. It's quite different. Democrat Congressman Rob Andrews helped write the health care legislation. He joins us. Good evening, sir. Greta, usually better to have you here in Washington, but it's good to be with you it's remotely. Nice, it's nice to have you. All right, to start this is that there has to be interstate commerce, that, the, that the, the federal government can't get involved unless there's interstate commerce. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Can you, to, to paraphrase what one of the justices has said, uh, is can you force someone into commerce so that you can then regulate the person? I don't think you can, but when someone's in commerce anyway, because they use the hospital emergency room if the need arises, then the cost of their care is either borne by them as a matter of individual responsibility or borne by the rest of the community. So the person's in commerce already. So by the hypothetical that most of us are likely going to need some health care sometime, I mean, some of us, you know, it sounds terrible, could get hit by a truck tomorrow and there's no health care involved. But for the most part, is the government's theory that, that there, at some point in our lives, we are going to need health care probably, therefore it affects interstate commerce and can be regulated by the federal government? Yes, and it imposes a responsibility in our neighbors if we don't choose to take that responsibility ourselves. That a person who says that I'm going to opt out of buying health insurance for myself is in effect saying that should they need it in that emergency situation that taxpayers and other premium payers should, should uh, pick up that tab. Now you can argue that that's a bad policy decision but I don't think it's beyond the constitutional authority of the duly elected legislative branch and the president. Is there something that the government, is there a limit to the government's power in this? Yes, there is. I, I think the limitation is uh, if someone's not going to engage in the use of a product or service, then certainly you can't penalize them if they don't buy it. So, for example, someone may never play baseball or never be interested in baseball. So forcing them to buy a baseball ticket would be an opposite, would not be something that uh, would make sense and would be on the power of the government on the Commerce Clause. So if, hypothetically, I signed a paper saying I refuse any medical care, I, no one can take me to the hospital, don't pick me up in the ambulance, don't do anything at all. Would that fall within something that, uh, would I then be forced in if, I mean, could I be forced into the commerce anyway? Yeah. Well, there is a religious exemption to this. You know, that if someone, as a matter of their religious faith, uh, believes that refusing health care is, is a matter of principle, then they're permitted to do that. But if it's not a matter of religious judgment, then no, you, because you would be visiting this cost on your neighbor, uh, you'd be subject, which by the way is why Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich and Chuck Grassley and Bill Frist and a lot of good conservatives originated this idea because it's a principle of personal responsibility. Did you hear the earlier discussion I had with the Attorney General of Texas about how had this been called a tax at the outset and instead it was really politically unpopular, nobody likes to raise taxes, uh, but had it, had it achieved a different pathway, you could have achieved what you wanted in terms of an individual mandate without now having this battle in the Supreme Court? Well, I'm, I wouldn't accept the premise that it's not a tax. The, the, um, the mechanism to, to collect the penalty is through the Internal Revenue Code. As a matter of fact, that, that what it's this not, really is. Yeah, but that's really, but that really, I mean, from the very beginning, we could go back through tape after tape after tape, and we heard from all the leaders, no, this is not a tax, this is not a tax. So it's sort of hard to sell to the American people, yeah. oh, ignore the YouTube tapes, uh, suddenly we're calling it a tax, but, and it's but gonna here, be a but tax. Here's, but here's the legal reality. A person who does not assume responsibility and buy health care pays a penalty. Penalty, that not is tax, collected, a, a penalty. Collected by, a penalty is different the, than a tax. Collected by the Internal Revenue Service. Right, and a person who does buy health care receives a subsidy through their tax refund. So this is a tax mechanism that's used. And uh, 
I don't, I don't think, know it, I don't, you a, know, Congressman, I don't think a tax is defined by who collects it. It's defined well, by what it is. How would say, you define it? You can it? have the Internal Revenue Service collect a penalty. It doesn't so, suddenly convert it into a tax. Is there any other penalty collected by the Internal Revenue Service that's not called a tax? Well, then why didn't you call it a tax? Why were you ducking the word? I say that I didn't. I know. Listen, I don't think, I don't I know, think constitutionally it makes a difference. Well, it, I, I don't know what the Supreme Court is going to decide on that. And I, I don't think, either. I, I think we're all going to learn by the, by the end of June. I'm just you know, curious. You know what, though, Greta? I do yeah. think this one thing. I think the truly conservative decision here would be to let the law stand to show deference to the elected branches and then let the people decide well, you, in the election. Stop, you know what, I'll take, let your, the people I'll, decide let me the take your task on that because you guys pass a law, I don't know how many read it, but then it gets shipped out it. it gets shipped out to HHS and there's something like, I don't know how many thousands of rules that are being created and implemented that affect all of us that elected officials are not making. And now that's the nature of the way this is done. But don't, I mean, the elected officials are not the ones who are actually writing this law that are affecting us. Well, I, I would disagree with that. The, the elected people made the decision to have the employer mandate, to have the benefits package, to have to close the donut hole, to eliminate the pre-existing uh, uh, condition discrimination that I think the court will and should defer to the elected branches of government and let this matter be decided by 130 million voters in November not nine justices in June. All right well we'll see uh, what happens come June and uh uh, well, I'm sure there will be a lot more time to talk about this. Congressman, thank you, sir. I look forward to it. Thanks, Greta.